All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video, we're talking about the general form of our sine and cosine uh, equations when we're talking about graphing these equations. And we're also going to be talking about the last kind of transformation, and that's the horizontal shift. So first, let me write out the general form of these equations. General form. All right, so we have y equals a sine k. Now, in the last video, I just had x here, but I'm going to say x minus b. This is my general form of the equation. Now, I've left out the horizontal shift, right? We know that if there's a horizontal shift, I'm just adding that much to y. So, no problem there. But in terms of what the actual curve looks like, this is my general form. And then for cosine, the same thing. I have y equals a cosine of k times x minus b. Now just to be clear, this k times x minus b, this entire part is the argu argument of my cosine. All right, I've separated it out a little bit because it's going to help us to figure out information about this, but this is all being plugged into the cosine function. All right. Now I won't always write it like that. We usually leave this k and then x minus b. So this does not mean sine of k times x minus b. This means sine of k times x minus b altogether in the argument. Okay. Now this is my general form. We've already talked about a couple of things. We know that a, this determines my amplitude of the function. K determines my period, right? We know that 2 pi over K, that's the period of this graph. And now we have this new part, X minus B, where it used to just be X. Now, with this X minus B, we have a horizontal shift. Horizontal shift of B. Okay. B. Now, there's a negative here in the general form, and it's very important that you remember that the negative is here um, because we're going to get into some double negative situations, right? Double negative, it's tricky in both English and in math. But let's say we have a B that's positive, that means I'm going to be shifting to the right. So the equations actually would be, for example, let's say B is 2, and this was A sine K of X minus 2. That means I have a positive b, right? This minus sign is not part of b. This is part of my formula, all right? So if I have x minus 2, that means I have a positive b. I'm moving to the right or in the positive direction. If I had uh, x plus 2, that would mean I had x minus negative b, right? And we'll do several examples of this. Uh, one last thing I want to say before we start graphing. Uh, after I have this shift and I've calculated out my period and all this kind of thing, one period of my graph, because of this horizontal shift, I'm not necessarily going to be starting at zero anymore. So I'm going to be starting at whatever b is, right? Taking into consideration that negative, that, that doesn't count, right? Whatever b is after that negative, and this is where I'm going to be starting from, and I'm going to be ending at b plus one period, or b plus two pi over k. So this is where we're, this is how we're going to find out uh, where we're starting our graph and where we're going to be ending one period of our graph. All right, let's do some examples. So let's say I have uh, y equals um, sine of x minus pi over 3. All right, so sine of x minus pi over 3, that means I have a b of positive pi over 3, right? So I'm shifting to the right by pi over 3. And pi over 3 is going to be about right here on my x-axis. And my total uh, one period of this graph is going to be from b, which is pi over 3, to b plus 2 pi over k. Now my k here is just 1, right? I don't have a coefficient here. We're just doing an easy example here. So my period here is still 2 pi. So I'm going to be going from pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3, right? That's 2 pi, which is 6 pi over 3, plus pi over 3. It's going to be ending over here somewhere, right? It's over there. Um, halfway through, I'm trying to figure out where my halfway is, right? I'm still just going to be adding pi to this, so I can kind of eyeball it. Halfway through is going to be about right here. 
and this sign graph is going to look something a little bit like this. Uh, let's see if I can. Right, I've shifted to the right by pi over 3 because pi over 3 is my b. Now let's say, let's go the other way. Let's say I have a y equals sine of x plus pi over 6. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes. Say x plus pi over 6, well that means I'm going to the right by pi over 6 because b is positive. No, that's not true. Remember, we need to incorporate that negative. That negative is a part of our general formula. So this is actually y equals sine of x minus, this minus being my formula minus, and then my b is actually negative pi over 6, isn't it? See that? So I'm shifting to the left by pi over 6 here. And pi over 6 is pretty small. It's going to be around right here. All right, so I'm going to be ending just pi over 6 to the left of 2 pi, right? My total period is negative pi over 6 to b plus my period. My period's 2 pi, so I'm really looking at 2 pi minus pi over 6. Um, 2 pi is 12 pi over 6. This is 11 pi over 6, isn't it? Okay, and halfway through is just going to be pi over 6 to the left of pi as well. And we can draw this out. looks something like this. Right? Everything's just oh, it's a bad dip, but everything is just pi over 6 to the left of where it is on this purple line. Remember this purple line is just my standard y equals sine of x over here. Okay, so that's how we do shifts. Now bringing it all together, I'm going to do a quick example of of what we would do in a typical uh, kind of problem uh, with these graphs. And then in the next video, um, I'm actually all done with material for this section. But in the next video, I'm just going to do another example video like we did in the last section um, with, you know, two or three practice problems that you might see on the homework um, so you can get used to kind of what the process is here. But I'm going to do one right here, and if you feel comfortable after that, you know, you should be good to go. Example. What a problem's typically going to say is something like find the amplitude uh, the period and shifts of, and in this example I'll do y equals 3 sine of 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 4. Okay, I'm going to find the amplitude, period, and shifts of this function. y equals 3 sine of 2 times x minus pi over 4. So let's document some of that down here. My amplitude, we know that this is the absolute value of a. Now looking up here in my general form, a is this coefficient in front of the trig function, right? So my amplitude here is the absolute value of th 3, which is just 3. Right, so we're done with the first part. Amplitude is 3. I need to find my period. Now I know that my period is 2 pi over k. And here, looking at my general form, right, my k is this 2 out here in front of the x, isn't it? So this is going to be 2 pi over 2. We get cancellation. So that's just pi. So I have a total period of pi. Now, finally, my shifts, I have x minus pi over 4, so that means my b is equal to a positive pi over 4. So I'm shifting to the right, right? I'm shifting to the right by pi over 4, aren't I? So I'm going to be starting from pi over 4, which is about right here. And as we discussed up here, we have a horizontal, if we have a horizontal shift of b, one period that I'm going to be graphing on is going to be from b, which is pi over 4, to b plus 2 pi over k, or b plus my period. Now we already found my period here to be pi. Pi is the same as 4 pi over 4, so I'm going to be ending at 5 pi over 4. This is one period of my graph. So here's pi over 4. 
uh, over here, after adding 1 pi, this is 5 pi over 4. Right, halfway between these two, uh, that's going to be uh, just adding pi over 2 to this pi over 4. Right, that's 3 pi over 4. It's about right here. And I'm still, my amplitude is um, 3, so I'm still going to take that into consideration. Right, an amplitude of 3 means that I'm going to be max maxing out and and bottoming out a total distance of 3 from my horizontal center. Right, so up here at pi over 2 which is one quarter of my period, right? We know that's where sine caps out. I'm going to be going all the way up here to 3, right? Because that's what my amplitude says. I have an amplitude of 3. And here at pi, that's 3 quarters of the way through my graph. That's where we bottom out. And we're not going to see it. I actually should have drawn this a little bit better. That's going to be way down here, right? So I'll go down and then kind of come back up. And in the next section, when we do some examples, my graph will be a little bit more malleable. So I'm going to go all the way up here, cap out at 3, come all the way back down, all the way down at pi, I'm bottoming out at negative 3, just beyond where my graph goes here, and I'm coming back up here. So this is one period of my function, or of my equation, y equals 3 sine 2 times x minus pi over 4. Okay, it looks a little bit messy, but this is what it looks like. and um, we can see finding the amplitude period, the shifts, all these things. It makes it kind of easy to graph these functions just knowing what the basic picture looks like without having to plug in any points or to, you know, plug in points and stuff. But keep in mind you're it's it's always okay to plug in a couple of points after you're done to check your answer. That's a really nice way to check your answer. Make sure that your graph is where it should be. So here if I plug in pi over two to my function, y equals 3 sine of pi over 2 oh sorry I have a 2 here right 3 sine of 2 times pi over 2 minus pi over 4 right this should give me 3 if this doesn't give me 3 it means our graphs wrong if it does give me 3 that should reassure me that I'm doing something right right so it's gonna be equal to 3 times sine of 2 times and then pi over 2 minus pi over 4 is just pi over 4 so that's equal to 3 times sine 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2 we know that sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1 isn't it so it's equal to 3 times 1 or just 3 so we're good right we've just kind of confirmed we haven't confirmed the whole graph but that should make us feel a little bit reassured uh, we've checked our answer we know that we topping out at the right place so everything looks to be in line alright now in the next video we'll do some more examples like this and we'll see you there